but maybe I should just say a few words. Um, so I feel so fortunate to be here. I mean, we heard so much absolutely phenomenal music yesterday. And of course, the competition doesn't make sense in a way because everybody really gives from themselves and makes beautiful music. So for me, it's just really a celebration of, of amazing things. And all of you guys, I, I just have to say, well, with the exception of the chord that I didn't hear yet, just thank you. It was so moving and such beautiful playing. And I'm so excited to hear all of you again. Um, so we'll have probably around half an hour for each group. Yeah, so maybe you won't even maybe play the entire movement, so we have maybe a little bit more time to kind of fool around with it, if that's okay. Yeah, so um, would you guys mind if we go over the Beethoven Opus 18? Yeah, so that would be Beethoven Opus 18, number five. Beethoven presents us with that maybe no other composer at least that time had. 
the dynamic contrast. The dynamics, yeah? The dynamic contrast, first of all, yeah? But also the way the dynamics are arranged, yeah? So if, say, maybe um, other composers, the dynamics come in a more expected way, in a more anticipated way, yeah? We crescendo and then we actually arrive somewhere. Yeah, in Beethoven, very often you go, and then he makes you stop, yeah, because afterwards there's a subito piano, or the dynamics come just one after another without any preparation at all, yeah? You play piano, 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 and then boom, subito forte, yeah? So it's the dynamic changes, yeah? And the character changes that are very often happen in a split second, yeah? And of course, technically, it's, it's challenging to execute it precisely, um, but also to kind of make musical sense, yeah? Sometimes it's a, bit, um, it's a bit challenging as well. Now, I feel that you guys are very true to the score and you are doing these things really well, but I was wondering if we can explore this further and you were talking um, about the dynamic contrast, yeah? So kind of for me, um, it signifies not only the dynamic changes, but actually the, maybe also the range of the dynamic that you're getting, yeah? So maybe if we think about Haydn, yeah? The forte and piano, they would not have such a huge, enormous range and be as extreme, yeah, as in Beethoven. Um, so first of all, let's, let's maybe start from the very beginning, yeah? So um, what is the general dynamic? It starts at forte and then yeah, basically piano with sforzandi, yeah? So how, how would you characterize this sforzando if you have to think about character, not only volume? Just like a round emphasis. Mm -hmm. Round emphasis, maybe like something that is fun, yeah? And, or like joking. I think this movement has a lot of humor. Would you guys agree? Yeah, it has a lot of humor. It's not serious music. It's not AP <coughs> number four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So can we can we experiment with that a little? How about maybe we have it once without the first violin? It's just the three of you guys, and we can see maybe if you can get a little bit more fun in this for something. <laughs> Yeah, probably grow. So maybe the first one is kind of just, oh my god, this is exciting. And then more. And the third one, wow, we are having a blast. Would you try that for me? Ah, very nice. Excellent. Now, um, just to say something about the sound. Yeah? Um, we often, often, often think about my God, we have to start the note together. But we don't always think about the release, yeah, and how we release the bow. Um, for me, um, it sounds a little bit like the ends are um, kind of going a little bit there. Um, what I would like to hear here is maybe something that, um, if you can think that you're actually spinning your sound to the audience, that it doesn't stay here, yeah? So basically, you are going to scoop exactly like you do, but then the, um, the lift is going to be maybe a little bit more energetic and kind of thinking about sending the sound into the hole. Try one last time. Ah, very nice. Now with the first fiddle.
the magic happens. Yeah, because what I hear right now a little bit is that it starts rel relatively soft and then you crescendo into the high F. Now, I completely agree with you that you really want to open up the sound, but you want to do it maybe more in color rather than volume, yeah? So try it once again. <laughs> or you know this is very theatrical yeah so how, how is that different in your opinion <coughs> Mm -hmm. And maybe maybe compared to the 
the shorter passages is more lyrical, yeah? So I think you guys can enjoy this a little bit more, the right? Something that is a little bit more this. So basically kind of I think what I'm trying to get at is every time the texture is changing, every time the dynamic is changing, it's not only something that is technical, but you kind of want to embrace it and really to take advantage of what is different, yeah? Would you try that? Um, maybe from the second time it repeats, that would be pick up to bar 16. something completely different. Um, now we have a unison, yeah, which is something that is very new. Um, is it continuing to be very bright or there's something like what helped me? Okay, anyone else? Any ideas? I think it's a little bit Yeah, we have the... Oh wait, yeah, what the hell is that, right? <laughs> yeah? Um, can, you, can you guys play? Um, maybe once a little bit slower, right? Pick up um, of 24, yeah? And kind of what I want you is really to explore how, you know, all these intervals work together. Okay, so maybe the D sharp is pom, pom, pom. It's kind of the odd out, and then and then pom. This interval has a lot of tension in it. Yeah, so can you again show it, but in a very exaggerated way? Yeah, so everybody here really feels that. Okay, can it be even more intense? Now, um, what I think in technical terms what makes the sound a little bit too happy or or kind of, uh, it, it creates a feeling that, you know, still everything is good, is that um, the bow moves very, very fast, yeah? So you get kind of a lot of light, lightness and a lot of light in it. How about if we experiment with doing something exactly opposite? So maybe one time to try to play with a more even bow speed and maybe more concentrated so kind of you really get our attention to the pitches okay once again once again very good now where would you say the, the first bar leads how, how would you pace it in half bars or maybe leading all the way to the soprano? Yeah, all the way to the soprano, yeah? So that's the hard thing about playing movement in, in 6-8, that sometimes the half bars, they become a little bit too important. So can you now shape a little bit more? Oh, it's all really, really great. 
and then surprises. Yeah, so do you understand kind of what I'm getting at? So maybe creating a little bit more separation in time and in character between the very bright and beautiful forte that we are playing before. Yeah, let the sound ring and then um, come with a new character. Yeah, w would you be willing to try that? Maybe from measure 23? <laughs> Okay, very good. Now, now what is what can help us collect the timing? Yeah, is again if we remember to lift the chords together. Everybody has a quarter, right? So ta pa 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 pam. Yeah, we want to bring it together. Yeah, and again, think about spinning the sound into the audience. Okay, very good, very good. Now, what what kind of a sign you are giving for the the next section? Because all of you are giving a sign, yeah, which is fantastic, but it's a little bit undefined. So, what would you say? Yeah. So half bar, yeah. So da 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 bam, bam, yeah. And so you kind of want to sense when you all feel this half bar. Yeah. Try it once again. Okay, once again, once again. Yeah, can you, can you make it? So you kind of, um, you want to collect the momentum of the group. Feel each other, yeah, it takes a few times. Now think about the character change. So even in your um, half bar sign, yeah, you want to build a new character. Okay, so how did you feel that work? What was missing, if anything? Yeah, the character was a little off. Now, how? What, what, what did you do differently now? That was not quite like you practiced it before. So. Mm -hmm. It's something about this, the bow speed. Yeah, because this bow speed kind of belongs to the um, stereo. So you want to think about having a more uh, a slower bow. Yeah, less kind of jumpy. Yeah, something maybe a little bit more gooey to support this character. One last time. Beethoven, really, 
any composer, but Beethoven in particular, when he writes pianissimo, yeah, um, it really when he's about to say something incredibly important or something very, very, very special and dear. Yeah, and I think this is really one of these moments. So it's kind of not by accident that right here he gives you this pianissimo. Yeah. Now, so how again? Let's think a little bit more, maybe also in technical terms. How are we going to make it stand out? Because before you do have piano, yeah, you are not coming from a forte, which, by the way, was really good. Yeah. So let, let's think. Um, so first of all, what kind of a piano is that? Is it a warm piano? Is it a lyrical piano? Is it a very kind of hushed, soft piano? What is, what is it? Very lyrical. Hmm? Very lyrical, yeah. yeah. Would, you, would you imagine playing it kind of warm? Yeah, because we had a maybe more severe, and again, we go back to the unison, so the forte is something maybe a bit more kind of severe or like determined, and then this is maybe the more personal. Yeah, so, so maybe let's characterize it as something warm and something personal, yeah? And then the pianissimo, what would it be in terms of character? Okay, lyrical. Mm -hmm. Okay, hush, yeah. Maybe more bright because again we are going from minor, yeah. You still in minor when the the piano comes, yeah. And then you have the major, so maybe something more bright, something more kind of shimmery and exciting. So after the the warm, maybe relatively slower or, and wider vibrato in the piano, something maybe a little bit more fast and. And narrow. Can we try that? Maybe right on the. Is it cruel to ask you to start uh, right on the piano? The pickup. Okay, very good, very good. So maybe one thing that I'm missing a little bit in the piano is a little bit core in the sound. Yeah, the sound is very, very beautiful. But I'm not actually getting a lot of. A lot of friction, yeah, and, and these are chords, and very often, you know, when we want to kind of bring the chords together, we really want to kind of push our sound, yeah, into the group. Okay, can you try that again? Okay, now I love the piano, yeah, but it seems to me like it don't quite have enough room to go to the pianissimo, yeah? And maybe the piano in this movement, I mean, also comparing it to the... It's kind of your speaking voice piano, so it's not something out of the ordinary, yeah? But it's just not loud, as opposed to the forte. So why don't you give me a little bit more sound in the piano, yeah, and then in the pianissimo, go really down. Now, another thing to consider is that on the second bar of the pianissimo, you have the hairpin. Yeah, so probably when the pianissimo just starts, you want to play completely flat, so then the hairpin actually have a, has an impact. Yeah, try it once again. Yeah, very good, very good, that was very good. Now, I could imagine, you know, again, um, this is so, this is so exquisite, and now we're going into such detail um, I loved your piano, but then I missed feeling the the intervals, yeah? And I would kind of not think about rushing through it, but maybe showing each one on its own. So, and then kind of you go slowly back into, yeah, where we've been before. So again, you want to think, like an actor, and the, the audience, they have no idea what's coming, right? Because they maybe never heard this piece before. Who heard this piece before? Not so many people, right? So you want kind of to surprise them, yeah? Can we try it one last time? Very beautiful.
difficult. Now with ear, he restates the pianist to mom. Yeah, which is probably Beethoven telling us, oh, let me just stay there a little longer, a little longer, a little longer. And that's, I think, kind of part of the magic. Oh, la, 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 la. Yeah, so all until here, it's, it's, it's very intimate. It's something very, very, very special. And it kind of stays there and it stays there for a long time. Yeah, and it's not so easy. <laughs> Yeah, can you now do the same thing I promised one last time um, and kind of keep it very, very flat before the hairpin and then the hairpin maybe warm up the sound? Again, yeah, the absolutely right. We are going to the conversational thing and we are going to the short note element, right? The eight notes become very important, yeah? So can you show me these things and can you show me also that after something very lyrical, we are going to something very rhythmical. And now in your part, yeah, second violin and viola, you kind of, again, you want to think about surprising each other because... Yeah, you all have kind of a different harmony, a different register, yeah? So you, in a way you want to show your musical personality. Yeah, can we start right there? From my... From B, letter B, yeah, right on it. Yeah, I guess you have different letters. Yeah, I meant here. Very good, very good. Yeah, so that's the idea. Now, I think we have to finish in a few minutes. Now, one thing that I can say is that, you know, why am I asking all these questions about the character and I want you guys to tell me what the character is? Because uh, as opposed to playing solo, yeah, you kind of, you want not only to play a very distinct character, but you want the character to be unified within the group. Yeah, because if somebody wants to play very lyrical and somebody else wants to play very rhythmical, say, yeah, so kind of um, the, the common result that they projected out is sometimes a little bit unclear. Yeah, so we, I'm sure you guys talk about a lot of things and a lot of it was extremely beautiful. Yeah, already, but I felt like sometimes all these characters could be just a little bit more defined, yeah? And sometimes by, by actually wording it, yeah? And, and, and making maybe like um, character words to each section, yeah? That, that can help that and, and, and kind of exaggerating the dynamics because in Beethoven, that's really not something that is superimposed, but it's really a part of the music, a part of the, of the character and the structure, yeah? but it's already really terrific and a lovely spirit. Bravo.